Olivia, have you cleaned up the grass in the yard? I see it's overgrown, but there's no one to clean it up. It looks like a jungle out there. How can you stand living in such a mess? I haven't. Lately, morning sickness makes me feel tired and can't get out of bed, let alone clean the house. I'm sorry, but I'm not feeling well enough to do any gardening right now. I'm sick of your excuses. You make excuses for your laziness. You are the daughter-in-law, the wife, not the queen in this house. You can't even do something as simple as clearing the grass. Do you really know what it means to be a housewife? You have to take care of the house and make it look presentable. You can't just neglect your duties and expect someone else to do them for you. Of course, I believe I am completing my household chores to the best of my ability. Unfortunately, my body hasn't been able to keep up, and that forces me to rest quite often. I hope you can understand and be patient with me. There's no way that's true! You're just using being pregnant as an excuse to be lazy and put off your wifely duties. Do you really think it's okay for you to be such a sloth? You should be ashamed of yourself! There is no way. I believe that I am working as hard as I can and trying to do as much as possible. But sometimes, I just can't help feeling sick and weak. It's not like I want to be this way. It's just how my body reacts to being pregnant. I heard from Darius that you've been slacking and making him meals, and the quality of his food is also dropping. To think we allow such a miserable specimen of a wife to marry into our family. We are this close to completely giving up on a lost cause such as you. It is true that I haven't been able to make meals the same way I had been able to before. It's just that my morning sickness and nausea act up more when I smell certain foods. Even with that, I make sure Darius gets a healthy meal three times a day. He also says he is grateful that I am trying so hard for him. He even said he would buy his lunches during this period to make things easier on me. He's just acting nice to you because he knows he married such a useless wife and knows he can get better food elsewhere. For the past month, all I hear from you is, I'll try, or I'm doing my best, and other excuses that seem thought up by a mentally challenged chimp. If the results are garbage, then it doesn't matter how hard you try. I'm sorry that I can't do things the way you want, but I am doing as much as my body will allow me at the moment. I promise to try harder to earn your respect. Try? You? How is that going to change anything? As hard as you try, things won't change much because the level that you think of hard work is still under par when compared to normal housewives like me. Since your baseline abilities are so low, I guess that's just another one of your defects. But I expect you to be able to do at least the bare minimum for my son, since we all know that you're below average in pretty much everything. Don't you think you should be putting forth more effort to meet society's norms? I have no response to that. While that may be true, I'm sure I could do more if I was able to get more advice and support from you, my mother-in-law. You want my support? Why would I lend my support to someone who doesn't try hard themselves? If you want my support, you need to earn it. No way in hell will I help someone as lazy as you and only good at giving excuses. You probably tricked Darius into having a child with you, right? What do you mean? That makes no sense at all. You wanted to keep living the sweet, easy life of being a housewife. So you are using Darius to support your lazy lifestyle and guilt him into going easy on you by getting yourself pregnant. You're just taking advantage of Darius because he makes good money, aren't you? And by having a kid, it'll be harder to cut away a parasite like you. You are the most conniving, audacious woman I have ever met. It's not like that at all. I loved the job I had before we got married, and I was raised to be self-sufficient by my family. Darius knows how much that job meant to me, and even he was surprised when I quit it to follow him when he got transferred to the main office. We agreed that I would do work around the house until I found a new job, but then we found out I was pregnant, so that got put on hold. I fully intend to go back to work once our child is born and things settle down. A likely story. You say that now, but I know that you finally understand that lazing around the house and doing the bare minimum fits your millennial brain. You're just going to find some excuse to keep working as a housewife and live off Darius's hard work. It is so easy to see through the shallowness of your personality and your belief in your own entitlement. I know that women like you, who are a little pretty, 
use their charms to nab a guy better off than themselves so they can lead a life of luxury and do almost nothing in return. I can't stand the sight of your generation that has had everything handed to them on a silver platter, thinking that they can continue to get through life leeching off others. It may be true that my generation had it easier than those before it, but isn't that what all parents strive for? I too want to work hard so my children don't have to go through as many hardships. You say a lot to me about being a housewife, but aren't you one as well? Of course I am, but it's okay, because that's just the time we lived in, nothing wrong with that. Men worked and women stayed at home keeping the place clean and making sure the men had a warm meal. You're waiting for them when they returned. Really? My parents both worked full time, and so did the parents of almost all the people I grew up around. That just shows the difference between our white-collar world and your blue-collar existence. Nothing to be ashamed about. Well, if I had a daughter like you, I would be pretty embarrassed by how you turned out. I don't think that has anything to do with it. Stop changing the course of this conversation. Do you understand what it means to be a part of this family? Once you took our name, certain responsibilities also came along with it. With that being said, for the next family reunion next month, you don't expect to be treated differently just because you're pregnant, do you? There are going to be a lot of people there, so don't embarrass me by not doing your fair share of the work. I expect you to work doubly hard to show that you are a good fit for our family. I will help out as much as my body will allow me to. By then, my morning sickness should have abated for the most part. I hope you understand your position here. You are going to be allowed to visit your in-law's house, so you had better show up prepared. You know what that means, right? Don't come empty-handed. Of course, we always bring a gift of gratitude when we visit. I always try to choose something that best suits the occasion that we meet under. And instead of the cheap crap you usually bring around, why don't you dig a little deeper and bring something that might actually make me happy? I try to choose something different every visit, but I just can't figure out what your preferences are. If you could please let me know what you would like to see us bring. Seriously? This is how your generation handles things. Are you so insensitive and bad manner that you have to ask such things? In my day, such questions were unthinkable. It pains me to see how uncultured people like you have become. Try thinking for yourself for once and show that you can choose something that would make me happy. I understand. I will think about it and get Darius's opinion on what to get you guys. Hello, Olivia. Do you have a little time to talk? There's something that's been bothering me, and I wanted to clear it up with you. Hi, Dad. It's good to hear from you again. You're always busy with work. How's everything with you? Are you doing well? Pretty good. Well, are you free? I have something to ask you. It's kind of personal, so I hope you don't mind. Uh, yeah, of course. What can I do for you? Recently, Nate has been in a really bad mood. Unstable, really. I'm not sure if it's because of menopause or some other reason. But all she does is complain constantly. I know it's rude of me to contact you directly about it. But she is always talking poorly of you, and it is worrying me mightily. She says things that don't make sense and don't match what I know about you. Thank you for coming to me directly with this. If there is something that I am doing wrong, I will fix it. Could you please let me know what she's unhappy about? Maybe there's some misunderstanding or miscommunication that we can clear up. Well, ever since Darius first introduced you to us, I have known you as a humble and hardworking individual. So I'm not swallowing everything my wife says as the gospel truth. So if anything I say is not true, I want you to let me know. Just hearing you say that makes me feel safer and happy. Thank you for trusting me. You're a good father-in-law and a good friend. Okay, so for example, is it true that since you quit your old job and got pregnant, you've been blowing through Darius's savings? What? That's impossible! We've been making do with the income Darius brings in every month and haven't had to resort to either of our savings yet. Darius gave me full access to all his accounts so I could get things ready for our baby or make things easier for me while I'm pregnant. But I feel that the money should be saved for something else if we can get by with what he is making already. I see, so Nate is lying to me again. It's hard for me to say it, but that seems to be the case. Also, since I'm at home resting most of the time, 
I don't really have a reason to spend much money at all. There is no reason at all for me to dip into Darius' savings. That makes sense. According to Nate, ever since you got pregnant, your personality has shifted and you've been buying expensive brand products to relieve the stress you feel from the pregnancy. And because of that, your relationship with Darius is becoming strained. I'm shocked to hear this, not only because it's not true, but also because it doesn't even sound real. Why would she believe something like that? Darius and I are very happy together and we're looking forward to welcoming our baby into the world. We don't need any expensive things to make us happy. We just need each other and our family. So that's the case. To be very honest with you, I've seen this happen before. What do you mean? I know that our extended family is meeting up at our place for a Christmas get-together. But I was wondering if the three of us, including Darius, could sit down and have a talk before then. There's something important that I need to tell you both. It's about Nade and her past. Of course. I will check with Darius, but I'm sure it would be fine. He wanted to talk with you too. <laughs> Olivia, your face was priceless. Your expression when a glass of champagne is thrown in your face is hilarious. I wish I had a camera for it. I would frame it and put it up in our entrance so everyone could see the stupid look you had on your face. This is an example of a country bumpkin that decided to sit down for a minute instead of doing exactly what her mother-in-law told her to do. It would be the engraved caption under it. I only sat down for a minute. I didn't think that would enrage you enough to splash a glass of wine on me like that. Moreover, this is the Christmas gift that I spent a lot of time choosing for you. Really? A bottle of champagne for less than $6,000? If you want to show your heart, you should choose a really expensive bottle of wine, such as the 1937 Crew Collection Magnum. Besides, you should buy a lot of expensive fruit too. You're so cheap and stingy. That's crazy! You judge anyone's heart by the value of a gift? That's so shallow and materialistic. I chose this wine because it's from your favorite region and it has a good rating. I thought that you would like the taste and the quality, not the price tag. I may not care about the gift's value to others except you. You're such a lazy, useless woman. Look at your brother-in-law's girlfriend. She's so cute, capable, and knows how to please. She brought me a diamond necklace and a bouquet of roses. She's a thousand times better than you. You're going too far. You watch your mouth. Did you really think you could take a break just because you're pregnant? How weak are you millennials anyway? It's in our house rules. Wives need to be eternally on their feet ready for work. As soon as you decide to marry my beautiful boy, you agreed to live by my rules. So I expect you to work regardless of your physical well-being. I was helping out the entire day without rest. Not even being allowed to rest for a minute is too harsh. This is supposed to be a family, not an Amazon warehouse. It was like this when I married into this family. So I expect you to follow the same rites of passage. It's even within my authority if I decide to knock you to the floor when you are in my way or moving too slow. Are you serious? You have to be kidding. That would put the child I carry in danger. Then it's your responsibility to protect them by not being lazy and working hard. It doesn't matter if you're pregnant. You just married into our family, so you need to sweat blood and tears to earn a place here. Next time I catch you resting even for a blink, you will find your ass on the curb so you can think about how useless you are being. Don't worry, I'm never coming back. Like you have a choice. When Darius wants to see me, you will have to tag along as well. Then I can give you a piece of my mind. Wrong. Neither Darius nor myself will ever breathe the same air as you ever again. Tonight was the last time you will ever lay eyes on either of us. Thank you for showing me how not to act as a mother-in-law when my children bring home their partners. What on earth are you talking about? Who do you think you are talking back to me like that? When you get back from changing your clothes, I am going to show you the true meaning of respecting your elders. Hurry up and change. How long does it take you? This is what I'm talking about when I say you are a slow dimwit. Darius has already sneaked me out of the house and we are on our way home. Since you will never see me again, you no longer need to waste your anger on me. 
please find something else to vent your frustration on. Maybe knitting, jogging, joining the army as a drill sergeant. Don't give me that nonsense. Once you marry into my family, you'll be expected to be obedient as an in-law. Once Darius read that you would kick me out of the house in this weather, he snapped. He said anyone who would put a mother and child in that much danger is worse than Stalin and a disgrace to humanity. That's how he put it, minus the swear words. Quit fooling around and get in here. As long as you do as you're told, nothing bad will happen to you. So quit mouthing off like those pundits on the TV. Everyone knows that expecting mothers should not be overworked or stressed out by chores. You know this better than most, don't you, Nade? What kind of weak snowflake talk is that? Quit acting like a victim and get back here. You are so blind by your own self-righteous ranting that you haven't looked around the room at all, have you? Where is everyone? You've just been projecting your own hypocritical standards onto me this whole time, haven't you? The lazy daughter-in-law that always shirked her duties was you, wasn't it? How dare you? How would you know anything? I heard everything from your husband. When you were pregnant with Darius, you used that as an excuse to completely stop doing housework. He said that he would come home to a filthy house with no food in the kitchen, but find you in your infamous reclining Buddha pose on the sofa, giggling and munching in front of the TV. Infamous? What's that mean? Yes, it's an inside joke amongst the whole family. You were probably in that pose on your sofa during most of our conversation, weren't you? How dare you? No, I wasn't. Your sister snapped a pic and sent it to me before she snuck out 15 minutes ago. And your brother showed me his collection of pictures he's taken of you over the past 20 years. On that couch, in that pose. I actually wet myself a little laughing, looking at them. I would like to blame it on the pressure the baby is putting on my bladder, but it probably would have happened regardless. Lies. Horrible lies. Back to the main point. When you were pregnant, you used that as a shield to avoid doing any chores, even when you felt fine. In fact, you always boasted that you never once experienced morning sickness to your friends after Darius was born. You went on shopping sprees with his credit cards, claiming that it was the only way to relieve the stress you felt from the pregnancy. Whenever someone confronted you about your behavior, you would go into hysterics and enter drama queen mode. I don't know what Ryan told you, but it's obvious that those are all lies. He's just trying to make me look bad. I even heard similar stories from his siblings, cousins, nieces, and nephews. With so many corroborating stories, it's difficult to believe your claims that they are all lies. They all said the same thing. That you were always rude, lazy, and selfish. That you never helped out with anything and always expected to be treated like royalty. That you made everyone's life miserable with your constant demands and complaints. How could you? Why would you stick your nose so deep into our family's affairs? You're just an outsider who married into this family. You should be grateful that I even let you stay here and not cause any trouble. There is no reason for father to lie. In fact, these stories only make him look bad for letting you walk all over his family name. There really was no need for me to talk to so many other family members. But once they heard that I was looking for more evidence, they began contacting me instead. Ryan telling me his story had the effect of that little Dutch boy taking his finger out of the hole in the dike. There's even a group chat full of family members trading stories about you named A Compendium of Caligula, Nades Chronicles. You can credit that clever alliteration to Darius. This is the most humiliating thing I've ever heard. How dare they talk about me like that behind my back? They are all liars and traitors. Oh, it gets worse. Your brother made an internet form of the same name, and it blew up. A what? It's better if you stay clueless about that one. Trust me, you don't want to know what people are saying about you online. How could you do something so terrible to me after all I've done for you? Me? I just asked questions if my treatment at your hands was par for the course in this family, and obviously it wasn't. How dare you put me on the spot like this? So what if it's true? What are you going to do about it? I'm not going to do anything. The bear incident that you so enjoyed inducing seems to be the straw that broke the camel's back. Ryan has had enough and intends to cut you off completely. What do you mean? Where is he? He's in the passenger side next to Darius. Why did you take him with you? What are you going to do to him? 
Whoa, stop jumping to conclusions. We didn't take anyone. He wanted to come with us because he was sickened by what you did tonight. He was in tears and on his knees begging us for forgiveness, even though he did nothing wrong. Why does he have to apologize? You're the one who is being lazy. You were the one loafing around her entire life. Ryan? No way. Yes way. He decided to reply to that after reading it. Tell Ryan to stop coddling you and get back where he belongs. It seems that you are always the abnormal one. His parents disliked you from the beginning. But he stuck by you out of duty and the hope that you would become a better person. That's not true. They loved me like their own daughter. I was the best daughter-in-law they could have ever asked for. You would never brought gifts. You entered their house without greeting them. You acted like you owned everything. You disappeared into the bathroom whenever it came time to clean up during family get-togethers. You talked down to everyone like it was your right because you married the eldest son. And the most hypocritical thing of all is that you used your pregnancy as a get-out-of-jail-free card to avoid helping out during the family's Christmas party. How did your ears not burst into flames of embarrassment, telling me to do all the things you refused to do? That's not exactly the way I remember things. Maybe it's possible something like that may or may not have occurred in such a way at one point in time. If viewed from a certain way in a specific context, you could have made a fortune as some politician's speechwriter. You, even bald face, lied to me that you were treated the same way you were treating me. Ryan's family was nothing but accommodating to your selfish outbursts and diva-like outlandish actions. Then you had the gall to force all your work onto your son's pregnant wife. You never lifted a finger to help with anything, but you always complained about everything. Well, I'm not young anymore, so it's only right that a younger person works harder than an older person. It's the natural order of things. You should respect your elders and do as they say. You are only 45. My mother and aunt are in their 50s and they still work full-time jobs in addition to doing house chores. They never ask for anything in return, but they always give generously to others. They are the true examples of respectable elders, not you. I think I have arthritis and cataracts, so it's dangerous for me to work too much. I need to rest and take care of my health. Well, new excuses. I've heard enough. I am tired of your bullying. Darius and Ryan are done with your indolent and reckless behaviors. So before you can harm me or the life I carry within me, we will leave your life. Wait, what do you mean by that? Speak more clearly. Come back here and say that to my face, you coward. I already said that I will never share the same building with you again. Darius and father won't allow me and I don't want to. None of us want anything to do with you anymore. Brian will return in time, but when he does, it will be to make sure you leave his house. What? Why do I have to leave my own house? He's done with your erratic, hypocritical outbursts. He said he was fine overlooking your behavior up until now because it only made him look bad and didn't directly hurt anyone. But once you threatened the happiness and health of his son's family, you had gone too far. Fine. So as long as I let you ignore doing housework around here, it'll be fine, right? That is the least of the issues you've perpetrated. Dumping drinks on a pregnant woman and kicking her out in the winter cold are actions of a psychopath that are unacceptable in any society. Ryan says you need to look back on your actions and live with the consequences. Okay, I get it. Tell him to stop blowing this out of proportion and come back here so we can talk things out amicably. He's reading these messages himself, and he says he has nothing more to say to you. He wants you out of our lives before you can hurt his grandchild. Fine. I apologize. Tell him to forgive me and come back home. Your narcissism really has no bounds, does it? You really don't see the double standards you set for yourself and other people, do you? What are you talking about? I treat people the way they deserve to be treated and expect people to respect me the way I deserve to be respected. It's only fair. This is the self-centered behavior everyone is talking about. I have decided that in order to protect my child from your bad influence, he will never see the face of his future grandmother. Darius says that you will never see him again as well. He says that this is the wisest decision we can make to keep our new family safe from you. 
Your conceited, egomaniacal actions up until this day have led to this outcome. You've had an easy ride up until now, so it is high time that you learn how to work for your living. It turns out that Nade dropped to her knees and bawled for forgiveness from Ryan when he got back home a few weeks later. Unfortunately for her, he had had enough of her self-serving ways, so her apologies were dismissed. He evicted her from his house after living comfortably as a failure of a housewife, which forced her to find a humble job so she could afford a dingy apartment to live in. We can only hope that this experience can make her acknowledge her faults and give her a change of heart. I'm not expecting that, but who knows what the future holds. Maybe one day she will learn how to be a better person and a better mother. Or maybe she will never change and continue to be miserable and bitter.